And now it's time for our news panel. What could be more important? Never before have we realized as much as we do now that we need more young people in the Green Party. We need new blood, we need new talent, and uh, exciting young ideas. And we have to ask the question, how come there are not more young people in the Green Party? There must be a reason for this. And uh, we know that young people are facing a lot of problems today. I'm not going to steal their thunder by telling you what those issues are. They're going to deal with that. And uh, that's why we're having this panel. And I'd like to thank uh, James Prashante, a graduate of Rowan University and uh, a professional in uh, broadcasting. And uh, I'd like to thank you for leading our panel, James. All right. Hello everyone, uh, let me just introduce our panel here. I'm James Prashanti, I'm a radio TV film major, graduated from Rowan University last year, uh, currently working at a film company in Delaware. Um, this is Laura to my left. Um, we have Mike and Mike and Ariella to my right. Um, the way that we're just gonna run this is I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, what I've been doing since I got involved with the Green Party about six months ago, um, as well as uh, Laura's kind of been uh, a lot of uh, the force behind what's going on currently. Um, uh, after we talk about that, we're each just going to kind of introduce ourselves, um, state an issue that kind of got us involved with activism or the Green Party in general, something that's near and dear to us, and then we're going to open it up to a Q&A, just the kind of dialogue between the youth and you've, uh, the members that have been a part of the party for decades um, or several years, because a lot of us are new, a lot of us are just kind of learning um, the things that uh, the party's about, um, and it's important stuff to us. I mean, that's why we're here, and we want a dialogue on how to help you guys and how you guys can help us. Um, I'm going to start with uh, the project that uh, me and Laura have been working on for the last few months. Um, I'm going to let Laura say a few words about that, and I'll follow up. Uh, the nation. Ah. Um, so one of the things that we've been working on is changing the website that we've been using. Um, we did launch a new current website, but I thought that it might be useful for the party to move to Nation Builder. The reason being that we had a bunch of email lists and a bunch of databases, but they were all disparate, and all the different county parties had their own, and some were written on pieces of paper some places, and really what we want to do was to create a central database. So we have everyone's information, all their contact information, and so we could really you know, link in to Twitter and Facebook and get everything going off of one system. So I, I brought that idea to the Green Council and said, what do you think? You know, could, we, could we try this out? So we haven't officially changed over you know, the GPNJ URL yet, but um, the website is basically up and working and it can take donations, it can take memberships. So, um, so we're just really trying to modernize that, that portion, that like keeping track of data, and keeping track of people, and connecting with people in a, in a really modern social networking fashion. And uh, to follow up with that, uh, kind of the goal that we've laid out for ourselves over the next year is uh, we want to start reaching uh, more youth, growing the party. We all know lots of people here, uh, our friends, and uh, fellow classmates or fellow colleagues where we work that are really about the things that we're about, but they don't know about us. They don't know how to become involved with us. They have no idea that we exist. Um, one of the things that we want to do with our database is, uh, and one of the things Nation Builder allows you to do, is characterize your contact information. So when I put all of your names and phone numbers and email addresses into the database, I can tag you as being from Gloucester County or Morris County. I can tag you as being a youth. I can tag you as being male or female. I can tag you as being old or young. Um, eventually, or a gardener, she said. That way, when we target our emails, um, for example, the convention today, I would send that to all the Green Party members in the entire state. But if I have a youth event coming up, I could send emails to just the youth. I could send emails, if we have an organic gardening event, to just the people that are interested in organic gardening. Um, or I could send it to um, people that are only available during the week, if we have a volunteer opportunity. Um, it's a very useful tool. We're learning how to use it. But once we 
have the database in place, we can do a lot of things with it. Um, our goal for this year, one of the things we'd like to do is setting up a campus green initiative. We have a great resource in New Jersey as having some of the finest universities in the country and some of the finest youth attend these universities. We want to connect with these youth members. Um, Rowan University, Rutgers University, Princeton, um, Stockton. We want to get to these colleges and have contact points. Um, we have a campus, or we had a convention today on Rutgers campus, and of the people on the youth panel, none of us actually attend Rutgers. Um, if we had a, a group here, we could have, you know, emailed our convention flyer to the campus green group, and they could have circulated it around campus. They could have told their friends. We don't have that infrastructure in place currently because we don't know what youth are interested in the Green Party, where they're located at, where they're going to school. Um, hopefully after we build this database, we'll be able to set up that initiative and start contacting these people and getting them involved. Um, I'm moving, gonna move on to that to introductions down the line. We're gonna start with Ariella and then move to the two mics and then me and Laura will finish. But they're just gonna say a little bit about who they are, where they're from, and uh, the reason that they're here. You want to use that one? Is that one on? So I think this is the first time I've ever used a microphone before, so you just have to bear with me. I don't know if it's too close or far away, but um, I'm a student at uh, Mercer County. I actually hope to be transferring to Rutgers to uh, study ecology and uh, anthropology, and these are you know issues that I think are actually you know ecology is you know, very tied to um, you know a lot of the issues that the Green Party you know, is working on, and that's why I was interested. Um, so I'm just introducing myself and I'll pass it on. Hi, I'm Zach. I go to Kennedy County College for sound engineering. I play guitar and I thought I joined the Green Party to a student council mark, is that what you called it? Youth the Council. The what? Youth. Youth. Youth Council. Because um, I'm into politics. Um, Mike Mangles, I currently live in uh, Parsippany. Uh, I'm probably on the older end of the folks up here. I graduated high school in 2004 and then uh, college in 08. I'm currently attending Seton Hall School of Law. Um, and I'm mostly, having graduated college in, or high school in 04, I got to, in 18 months, see two events that shaped a lot of um, our generation's development. I saw the towers come down on September 11th, and in 18 months, I watched the United States launch an unprovoked and illegal war of aggression against the nation of Iraq, um, and then proceed to trample human dignity and the Bill of Rights through torture, uh, detention without trial, and warrantless surveillance. Um, and as part of this generation, um, we've sort of learned how to grow up and tolerate um, trampling all over, or just tolerate assaults on our civil liberties and our civil rights. So most of us kind of think it's normal that uh, the government can surveil uh, conversations that we have without warrants, and we sort of accept that. So this is um, a pretty big issue with me and something that I'm looking to uh, attack when I, when I go into my career. But um, this is sort of what drew me to the Green Party because I saw uh, Ralph Nader running his campaign in 2004 in stark contrast to both the Democratic and Republican candidates as being against empire and for peace um, and human rights. And see, sort of seeing that contrast was really evident in Ralph Nader's campaign as opposed to both John Kerry and uh, George Bush's campaign. So that's what attracted me to the Green Party. And I've seen that, I saw that in Jill Stein's campaign and hopefully I'll continue to see it through um, the Green Party's uh, pushing forward. <laughs> My name's Mike Tannis. I live in Lincoln Park up in Morris County. And uh, <laughs> it's the first time I've heard that. Um, uh, to touch on Mike's points, actually, he mentioned a, a few that pertain to me. Not that it's a contest, but I'm actually older. I graduated in 2002 from high school. so. But uh, I was also a member of the Marine Corps after high school, so I was involved in the illegal invasions in, in both Afghanistan and Iraq. And um, after that, I 
use the GI Bill, which is a great resource that probably should be available to everyone, not just the military. But um, I used that to graduate from Rutgers in 2011, and I'm currently an ecologist with the National Park Service. And so I know a lot, and I care deeply about environmental issues. I've been able to work with uh, wetlands, you know, land use, pollution, natural resource management, stuff pertaining to climate change. And that's originally what drew me to the Green Party, but um, I'd have to say that a lot of the environmental issues, human rights issues, economic issues, they're all related. They're all possibly the same issue. So um, I would like to see more fundamental changes to the system and not just kind of attack, treating the symptoms. And I think one of the best ways to do that is on the local level. So I would like to see more uh, local initiatives, you know, maybe identifying, promoting, and supporting worker-owned enterprises, cooperatives, solar co-ops, stuff like that. So that's what I hope to get involved with. My name is James Prashanti, as you all know. Um, I became involved with the Green Party um, really within the last six months, but I kind of became aware of activism and a lot of the, the really big problems that our planet faces. Um, when I was just thinking about my uh, father's family, uh, my dad grew up in Brooklyn, a uh, family of seven. He had four siblings, um, lived with his uh, mom and his dad, in a small one-bedroom efficiency apartment. and. Uh, it was on a block with several apartments, and it was really a, an efficient, um, sustainable way of life at the time. Um, but that family has since grown. Um, the same seven-person family that once occupied one efficiency apartment is now spread across four states. Um, hundreds of acres it is now about 70 people when you factor in the uh, kids of those children and then their grandkids. And uh, that's really, a, in my opinion, one of the biggest problems is uh, this kind of unchecked, unsustainable growth. We just keep pushing and pushing and pushing for more people, you know, building more buildings, more development. And, uh, you know, we're kind of creating an infinite supply of people and buildings and energy consuming things. And our planet is finite. We can't really support um, to have five-person or six-person or seven-person families and encourage them to have five or six or seven-person families. And that keeps going on just in two generations, uh, a seven-person family growing to a 70-person family. If you go two more generations down the line to my grandkids, my grandkids' grandkids, there's not going to be any room left. There's not going to be any planet left. Um, we're going to use it all up. So I agree with the Green Party in the sense that we need to change a lot of our systems. Uh, we need to make things more efficient and conserve our resources and use them wisely. But all that's for naught if we don't check our growth problem. Um, if we keep growing and growing and growing as a race, no matter how efficient we use this planet, it's still finite. We're going to use it up. Um, that's kind of the near and dear issue to my heart that got me involved. Um, so I'm going to be. Uh, campaigning, not as a candidate, but campaigning amongst my friends and people I know, trying to get them to volunteer and be more active, um, to be more efficient, conserve resources, but also just to kind of think about the repercussions of having large families, building new houses, um, wanting everything to be new instead of reusing. I mean, half of our buildings are for, foreclosed or sit empty, and we'll find an empty piece of land and build something new rather than reusing what we already have. My name is Laura Friedenthal. Um, and just for the record, I'm older than all of you guys, and I'm not telling you how old. Um, I basically started learning about the Green Party during the last election cycle. Um, believe it or not, it was a Facebook poll that said, answer all of these questions and we'll tell you a candidate you matched with. And it told me, you matched with Jill Stein. And I said, who's that? <laughs> and went and you know, started reading through the platform. So that's kind of where it started. And it turned out that it was true. You know, I actually did most, you know, agree with most of the things that I, 
that I saw in there. And um, a lot of it, things like universal health care, which um, a lot of the debate about that was going on in this country while I was actually overseas getting a master's degree. So I was kind of hoping that when I came back, like the thing that I had wanted was going to pass and then it kind of didn't really go through the way that we all wanted. Um, so that means it's still now an issue. Um, and, you know, issues of corporate personhood are things that I think there are a lot of green issues that are sort of fundamental to making sure democracy works as we think democracy should work. Um, so those are some of the things that interest me the most. And I think also green, green energy in general, since I now, you know, live in an apartment and find that I, there's not so many things that I can do in a rented apartment to decrease my energy usage, which means that it's just plain costing me money that I don't necessarily have. Um, but, but if my city cared about that sort of thing, there are things my city could do to make sure that the place that I live is more efficient, that the city uses less energy, which would, you know, be great for the city and be great for me. So, um, I don't know, those are pretty much my issues. So now you know us, we know, you know why we're here, you know the kinds of things that uh, matter to the youth, you know, it's college education, tuition costs, it's, um, you know, things with the energy consumption. It's a lot of the same issues that matter to you guys, but um, we want to we wanna take these issues to the youth and get them to recognize that uh, there's an existing group, they may have some older demographics, some people that, you know, you might look scary or might not look very much like you, but they actually think a lot like you. And uh, they're actually a lot more similar than they're dissimilar. Um, and I just want to kind of open this up to a Q&A. How can we help you guys and how can you help us? Question? Yeah, I'm really, uh, really, it's really great to see, um, you know, sick young or young, youngish people uh, <laughs> yeah. up there at the front. So uh, this is definitely progress as far as the Green Party of New Jersey from where I, from my experience. So I'm really pleased um, that this has happened. Thanks to everybody, and all of you and others who helped to make this uh, panel happen. Um, my, my, the main thing I want to just, um, I guess it's kind of a question. Uh, I think it's very important that there be a youth caucus. Um, and when I say that, I mean an organized um, effort that is led by young people to figure out how to advance what we're all about and what the Green Party is all about. Um, and it's also important that young people be active in the Green Party, in the, in the campaigns, you know, the, elect, the election campaigns, as well as any other campaigns and the issues that we're working on. But, but the thing I want to, again, underline, it's really, I think, important for the growth of young people um, in the Green Party, and it's important for the growth of young people um, just in general, as far as the issues that are important to you, that there be an organized youth caucus. So my question, I guess, is, is this in the process of formation, um, or is it, does it exist already, or do you all know about that? There is a National Youth Caucus. They were formed, I believe, last year at the 2012 convention. I have had contact with the Youth Caucus. It's, it's pretty disorganized right now, I'll just say, from my experience. Um, I was able to glean uh, contact information for some of the people sitting at this table from the Youth Caucus. Uh, but right now, it's really just kind of a website that you go to, you sign up, and it takes your information. But it doesn't really get you in the loop with your state Green Party or the National Green Party. Um, it's, there's a lot more work to be done than that. And uh, just as far as what we're doing with the Green Party in New Jersey, as we said, is building a database. Um, and then once that database is built of youth contact information, hooking up with the Youth Caucus to make them kind of like an alliance, we can provide them with our contact information in ways that uh, they can utilize our manpower, if you want to call it that. And uh, at that point, hopefully, uh, they can start to, uh, or we can start to utilize their services, um, which at the moment uh, haven't really, <coughs> have really offered too much. Um, but as far as becoming involved as a national level, um, right now, me and Laura have pretty much been, I don't want to say it for the last six months, but 
there's only so much we can do, and right now our, our efforts have been focused on just figuring out which people in New Jersey are interested in the Green Party of New Jersey. Um, hopefully when we grow it to 10 or 15 or 20 or 50 or 100 people, we can start to uh, delineate jobs and uh, have somebody as focusing exclusively on the National Youth Caucus, somebody on the State Youth Caucus, somebody at each county, somebody at each college campus, but currently the infrastructure is not in place yet. National Youth Caucus is about 300 members right now, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this gentleman with the green button is mm -hmm. and they have a little bit of the I uh, would like to uh, urge that our convention set up a state youth caucus and to invite all of you who are interested to join it. I hope that this can be done right here today. Would you be interested? I would be very interested. It would, uh, I mean, currently, Bill has me serving as the uh, I'm not sure. Youth coordinator, I believe, is his position, um, and that's kind of what we're, what I'm focusing on doing is getting a, a working uh, hierarchy, a chain of command, a chain of communication going on, so we can reach the people we want to reach. Um, but it's going to take time, and I hope by the end of the year we can have at least an, a working infrastructure in place. Right. Thank you very much. I, I just want to respond to that uh, the suggestion. In case you, everybody didn't hear it, the suggestion was, why don't we form a New Jersey branch of the National Green Party Youth Caucus right now, today. Well, that would be nice on paper, but it has to be organized from the roots. You have to have people there who are willing to organize it and participate in it, and then you start it, you know, rather than just starting it as an empty phrase. So I think James is right on, uh, you know, working up to that point, and it will happen. Uh, hopefully by the next convention we will have a functioning Youth Caucus, thanks to the efforts of the group here today. Yes, Beresford? Yes, what was the question? Yeah. Um, I have, um, over the years, not just um, once or twice, uh, spoken to youth about um, the uh, possibilities of getting more involved as, as, as groups of youth rather than as individuals. Uh, who are working on this campaign, on that campaign, and so forth. Uh, and one of the uh, suggestions was uh, about uh, the various campuses. Now, uh, we have quite a number of colleges in New Jersey, and I've spoken at a, at a few colleges, and each college I've spoken to, spoken at school, uh, I've met students who showed an interest and who had feelings and beliefs pretty similar to ours. Uh, and some of them had a, a party, like um, uh, our Green uh, Bloomfield College. Uh, they have a, a little green group there, uh, which is not affiliated politically with us. Uh, but uh, if we can get in touch with, or if um, a committee could be set up to get in touch with student groups in various colleges and to find those youngsters and I'm sure that there's at least a half dozen or maybe a dozen students in each college who are concerned about issues the way we are you know and all, already you, you're talking about hundreds of students. I'll just say that, that what you're saying is what we're doing. Those students exist, and our project this year is to find those students. So the way we're building our database is we're going to the college campuses, not going physically, but going to their websites, finding the contact information for their progressive activists, student alliance groups, and we're sending emails uh, out to the coordinators for these groups. Um, in some cases, I know I've gone to Rowan with Bill. Um, we're hoping to have, once we kind of get some contacts out in far fetched places, hopefully some of the youth here today can help me with this, but getting uh, contact people from each of these campus groups and distributing information to their members, you know, we're pretty similar to you guys. You know, if you want to find out more, here's where we meet, here's the time, we can give them the county meeting schedule and get the youth from the college progressive groups to go to the county Green Party meetings 
and build our party in the exact way that you're saying. Because once we have the six people that are already so in support of our issues in the loop, we can uh, start to spread and uh, build up for 12 to 14 to 20, et cetera, et cetera. Did you have a... how he wants to use me. Uh, but um, what I'm suggesting to you is simply this. Now, I'm a college professor, so I've had a lot of experience in talking to youth. Uh, and um, I would be willing uh, to go to colleges to talk to youth. Uh, if you set, set, up, set up the meetings, uh, I recently bought a GPS uh, so that um, you, you tell me where the college is, and I'll plug in the address, and, and I'll go and talk to the students you set up the meetings. We will be sure to utilize you in that way. Huh? If, you're, if you're volunteering, we will utilize you in that way. Okay. Anyhow, it's just a suggestion, so I can be reached, you know, through um, okay. Bill. Okay, I will be sure to contact you. Right. Um, I heard a couple of references to the National Green Party Organization as Bill and colleagues had a discussion on sending a representative to the convention of the National Party, which would be extremely informative, and you could come back with all kinds of resources and, a per and widen the perspective. And I just want to say this, if you have a, one or two of you would be willing to do that, I think there would be tremendous support in this group, monetarily, if some of you make a total cost coverage. Okay, uh, just for those of you that couldn't hear that, Rich was saying that uh, would our organization be willing to send uh, a youth contingent to the National Green Party Convention? And, uh, and would you like to do that? Um, we'll have to talk it over. Um. <laughs> But, uh, where is it? Where Iowa City. City. Where is it? Iowa, Iowa City. City. Iowa City. Um, I would have to, I, I'll, I'll email and see if we have anyone interested, and then we can go from there. I know personally I, I can't go to Iowa City because of my current work schedule, but uh, if we could find a student, to, do you know when the National Convention is? What weekend? Steve Wilson, end of July. July? End of July. If we could find a student uh, from a university that would be willing to go, I think that that, uh, that would be very helpful. Uh, was there any more questions? You've been raising your hand for a while. Yeah, um, uh, I've studied a lot of science, including environmental science. And, uh, there are a lot of issues in the environment besides climate change. I know politicians, green politicians try to focus on climate change. I agree that's kind of important, but if you study environmental science, you know that there are other issues, issues such as overpopulation, natural, natural resource management, energy consumption, garbage, garbage dumps and waste recycling, rampant consumerism and affluenza of America. Uh, okay, excuse kind of, me, uh, do you have a question? I'm asking which of these issues are, which of these issues I'm naming are, does the party focus on? I'm not talking. Oh, they're all top issues to the Green Party. Uh, before we close, I would just like to ask you to um, tell us what you think, uh, putting aside the Green Party for just a minute, uh, what you think are the biggest problems for youth and students uh, in America today? Start with Ariella. <laughs> yeah, great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you um, had a good one. Well, I. Uh, oh, Question. Well, let me let me speak and then. Um, no, I was just I was coming to speak about the issue of the cost of higher education because I'm currently a student and I decided to go to um, a community college first because it was more uh, cost effective. And um, I'm I mean honestly I find it terrifying that uh, I have to think about at every moment you know how am I going to pay for college you know. And um, when I study something, whenever I talk to anyone, they say, well, what do you want to study? And I say, well, I'm interested, you know, in ecology, I'm interested in anthropology. These are things that are important to me. These are things that are interesting to me. I'm 
And they always say to me, oh, well, what are you going to do with that? You know, what job are you going to get? And I'm, you know, I'm not sure because obviously that's a problem nowadays. You know, there aren't as many jobs as maybe there, as there once were. And, to, you know, so, I mean, I always get, you know, this remark. And I don't see myself studying, you know, economics or anything else. These are not my strong points. So, uh, you know, and then again, there's always, you know, the problem that, okay, so you, you uh, study something undergraduate, you end up having to take out a student loan or, uh, whatever it is that you have to do, you know, to get through college. Maybe you have to leave college because you can't pay for it. And I mean, I personally find it terrifying the idea that I'll have to take out a student loan from the either the federal government, which is you know scary, but then even worse is from a bank, you know. And then once I graduate from college, I have to worry about you know um, thinking how am I going to pay this loan back? Will I have a job to pay it back? And then after that, you know, if I want to go to graduate school, will I be able to pay for that? I mean, these are issues that are are honestly you know terrifying, and I think that this is one of the most important things that, you know, issues that uh, people my age are facing, so. Well, I would also just like to mention that I just recently moved back to the United States. I was living in Argentina for um, almost five years, and um, I just moved back about a year ago. And I have to say that we're supposedly, you know, first world country, and we're supposedly doing so, you know, we're supposed to be top of the line, but we don't have um, access to education, we don't have access to health care, and these other countries that are supposedly third world aren't doing, you know, <laughs> we're not doing that much better than they are. And so I think, you know, we have to ask ourselves, why is that? And I just think that's just very important. Are we going down the thing take, with this? Take the question real quick. Go, go ahead. Um, yeah, I just have uh, one thing you've been about. Some of you can talk to me afterwards. I live in Jersey City, and I wanted to ask uh, somebody you get in touch with me. Now I can get some help starting. I want to start a Green Party chapter Hudson County, where I live, because it's so much wacky in terms of morale and involvement and participation. So, if some of you could talk to me about that, uh, you might throw if you want it. That seems okay, more like yeah, you. Yeah. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I, I can uh, help you with that later. This is a youth panel that we're talking about now. Well, yeah, but there are, there are students in uh, colleges. Uh, I have a question from our online audience. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> mayor David Noonan of Greenwich, New York, he's an elected Green Mayor, would like to know if any of you would be willing to work for elected officials in other parties to learn because we, the Green Party, need people to understand how that part of government works. So when we have people elected in office, they'll have the background and skills. I think that's a brilliant idea. I think um, as a party, we've got a, a pretty strong background in activism and in terms of pressure politics, uh, putting pressure on uh, those governing institutions. I don't think we have a lot of institutional knowledge in terms of governing. Um, so I think that's a brilliant suggestion and something that people should be willing to do. I know um, that I would definitely be willing to do that if someone were to have that sort of capacity in New Jersey. That that's that that's an example we should definitely be learning from. I don't know if anybody else wants oh, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a comment than a question. It's something that's worked for a lot of uh, a lot of minded organizations to help them build numbers, and that can help you is to uh, say hold a, a seminar showing the movie Gasland or something that has an ecological uh, bent towards it. And, so you have like-minded people will show up to it and like, be interested in joining the Green Party. So that makes it easy with you guys. And to expound upon that, there's lots of organizations, the Delaware River Keepers, that all the River Keepers, they will bring in speakers and talk about specific events in relation to what's going on right here and right now. And so people that might be interested in that will come to those speakers as well as those films. Thank you for what you're doing. <laughs> no, those, I mean, those, those are, are, those are, are good suggestions, suggestions, but that's not limited to campus organizations. Um, I think something that we could do is for county organizations to use that same sort of outreach mentality in terms of broadening its base. Um, there's no reason that a county couldn't bring in a speaker or something like that to bring in people that don't normally show up to these types of events. It might be a way to sort of broaden the base in terms of people that may have an interest, but aren't necessarily, but once they hear the term political meeting, it may turn them off. If you bring them into a speaker or something like that, you don't have to do it every month, obviously, but something like that would be a nice little special way to get other people I, uh, 
acquaint it with what the party actually stands for in some, in some of these more um, practical elements. Yeah. Another question in the back. Yeah. Uh, I have two youth contacts for you, so where would I send their names? That would be me, and you can see me after the youth panel is over, and uh, I'll give you contact information. For myself um, and for Laura, and if you have databases, we will enter them into our uh, nation builder. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else have any youth contacts, youth leaders? Uh, People who would make a good, uh, you know, youth involvement with the Green Party or, or youth green organizations. Uh, yeah. I want to know whether you young kids believe in free education. Is that possible? Why I'm asking you this question is right now we have a trillion dollar debt only from the student side. And also we spend about 60% of our budget towards defense. So there is plenty of money available. Do you have any kind of way to switch around and give the education and dialogue? To give a, a personal viewpoint on that question, um, the current college education or higher education, as some people call it, system is kind of it's consumerism. It's this you know package of four years, and you're going to go to a nice exotic low campus, some of them are more like resorts, and uh, you're going to pay, you know, tens of thousands of dollars for, yeah, you're going to get an education in the sense that you, there's going to be speakers and they're going to speak several times a week and you go and you learn and you have your textbooks, but you're also paying for, you know, the campus athletic center, a lot of them have student programs where they bring in comedians, they bring in, you know, performing artists, they have game nights, they have arcades, some of them, they have giant swimming pools, they have all these kind of amenities and perks and it's because they want you to buy their product. They want students to go to their school and so they say, hey look, we have all this great cool fun stuff and you know, you, you can get education too but you know, it's going to be this all in one package where you pay the tuition and all this stuff is included in it. And uh, to take a a page out of what Ariella said, you're going to have to spend, uh, you don't have thousands of dollars, so you have to take out student loans, which then force you to get a job to pay them back. Um, that whole system of educating people, um, I think is, it's not sustainable, it uses up a lot of resources that don't need to be used up. Um, there's a lot of other ways to learn. Um, there's apprenticeships, uh, I guess there's, higher education is not for everybody as, as it's set up now. There are certainly advantages to going to a university, to having a, a college professor, but there are many great minds that are self-taught, that are uh, tinkerers, that are dropouts, that uh, work um, on the, their own projects in their own terms, their own devices. And rather than telling our students that you have to go to a four-year college to be successful, you need a bachelor's degree to get a job, and employers making it a requirement to have those things, we should be encouraging kids that uh, you know, there's more than one way to get an education. There's more than one path or career that you can pursue. Um, and there's more than one way to do it. And um, instead, in my high school, guidance counselor is probably guilty of it. We kind of tell everybody that, well, you're going to drop out and work a, you know, working class blue collar job or you're going to go to college or the military. And those are your three options. And <coughs> that, I think, is a fundamental problem. Can you answer my I personally definitely believe in free education and like you said with the defense budget, the money's there. How do you get it? I mean a lot of people have tried to take on the defense industry and failed, you know, so I don't know how we get the money. Um, I went to school on the GI Bill and in my introduction to it, they always have this statistic that says for every dollar spent on the GI Bill, they get seven dollars return in taxes, you know, people get better jobs and whatnot. So that program's successful and there should be a way to not limit that just to military. So even if we were losing money on the GI Bill, I think it's still a, val a valuable program and we should do whatever we can to promote that. Absorbing capitalistic thinking, class thinking. Why not we actually 
bring uh, beyond my sensible structure for the students. I think that's a I, um, that would require more of a mass movement. I'd say that isn't isn't there right now. So I, the six of us, yeah, that's a start. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> However, it is kind of easy to say yes, but I don't get to write the budget for Congress. So, um, so if the question is, is it possible? Yeah, that's definitely possible. I mean, I got my master's degree in the UK and in Scotland specifically, and everybody in Scotland gets to get, you can go up to a master's degree for free. You just get to go. And, uh, and yeah, in a lot of places. And, um, and they just decided to, that was their priority. And that the and that country has always made education a priority. So, um, so yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, but it would I yeah like they say it requires a mass movement surely. And I think students are as they get continually burdened with not just debt but more and more debt. Every generation of students has more debt than the one before. Um, there's going to be there's got to be a breaking point where they're simply just going to be out of money for their entire lives. And um, and when you have broken them that much. Um, I think 7% of the budget goes to education and 60% goes to defense. Yeah, so is that true? Sure. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I was going to say, yeah, I mean, by your numbers, the money is definitely there. It's just convincing the country to make it, to change their priorities, which is what we're all here for, I think. Okay. Else to change? Mm, that's right. Well, that was very uh, enlightening, uh, and I want to thank the uh, youth panel for their discussion today. Let's hear it for our youth panel. I would like to uh, make a special uh, to give special thanks to uh, two of our volunteers. Usually we don't give out awards for somebody that's been uh, active in the Green Party for less than a year. But when someone comes along who's skilled and talented and dedicated and works hard to make a difference, we have to thank them and give them recognition. And I want to present this award of excellence in volunteering to James Prashante. Let's hear it. Party, uh, as she said, uh, less than a year ago. But in that time, she's done more than many of our other members who have been with us for a long time. She is uh, production manager. Is that right? Yeah. I, I just works. gave you a raise. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did. Doubled her salary. Doubled. University <laughs> Press, uh, right over there across the river in New York City. And she's very uh, talented in uh, design, graphics, editing, I mean, you name it. She really has given wholeheartedly, almost day and night, to uh, helping us during the past year. So she certainly deserves our thanks and an award for excellence in volunteering to Laura Friedenzoll. Thank you, Laura. Thank you all very much.